Hello, Internet. How are you? Looking fly. You've been doing something new? Um, hello. So today we are going to talk about this pumpkin. Um, I don't know if you know this, but I started an experiment with a pumpkin. Say 2019. I, I did this year where I decided to take Dr. Emoto's water experiment theory and all that I had been able to find out about it and the experiment that people do with rice and, and apples that are kind of based on that uh, that theory and I decided to see how long my pumpkin would last and it was mostly just because um, that year I bought the cutest Cinderella pumpkin from the farmer's market that looked like it was designed by Tim Burton. So I was like, I never want to let you go. I forbid you to die. Um, you'll have to last forever. So I basically enchanted the thing and it lasted. Uh, let's see, I bought it in September, mid-September. And that pumpkin lasted until August of 2020. And basically, and I did a couple of videos about this, and I had to take, so my pumpkin in mem mem memoriam, uh, and my tribute to pumpkin, I had to take down because I used Rod Stewart Forever Young <laughs> with, with a compilation of um, different, different pictures that we've taken with pumpkin over the year. And it was, uh, it was really great, and I have been censored by capitalism, and I'm enraged, and I don't know what to do with that rage, and so I guess I will channel it into some performance art. Uh, but I decided, um, and so the interesting thing about that pumpkin, and you can go back and watch part one of the video where I talk a lot about, so there's a document, there's, there's a bunch of different documentaries that mention Dr. Emoto's uh, water experiment. And so just to give you some background, Dr. Emoto is, I believe, a Japanese uh, physicist who spent a large portion of his career studying the properties of water because apparently there's a lot we don't know about water. We just took for granted um, and it's a very mysterious substance. So there are documentaries that reference his work like what the bleep do we know uh, which is a, a documentary that sort of talks about energy and consciousness and like stuff on a um, quantum level and then there's another separate documentary that i found on youtube just called and it's very generic dr emoto water experiment full documentary and it's about an hour hour and a half long and i suggest that you watch it and it's very like pbs not sexy at all, not sensationalistic. Nobody made any money on this thing, you can tell. Nobody spent any money on it, but it is very like PBS straightforward, so it doesn't really seem that wackadoodle. Um, but they go into specifically Dr. Emoto's work with water, and he found out a lot of different things about water, that water is very impressionable, that water is a living thing, that it has a, um, a memory and it remembers everything that it's ever been exposed to. And so water that has been through sewer systems and modern plumbing and cities and everything, it's been exposed to not only the harshness of the chemical um, processes that it's taken through to clean it, but also the harshness of the jolting experience of being pushed through the pipes um, being exposed to all the darkness that humanity has, whether it be stress or anger or abuse, you know, whatever kind of household you're going into, if it was, you know, if water has gone through like a hoarding house or whatever. So all of that trauma on water kills it and it becomes deactivated and it sort of dies, but it can be reactivated. Um, and I, I, they can do it in a lab, with electronic or electromagnetic impressions, I think. I, I don't know exactly how they structureize water, but you can restructureize the water and bring it back to life and kind of purify it and reset it. But r water always remembers where it's been. Also, the water in you, that makes up you, like genetically in your cells, has a genetic imprint that matches the water from where you were born. Um, there's a lot of like crazy things about water. Um, they did the sort of like uh, by location experiment using water. Um, if you're a physics nerd, you might be familiar with that. But basically, it's like 
a bilocation experiment is when you take, I guess, some like one cell and you split it, or like you, you're, you're, um, I can't remember exactly, but it's like you stimulate a cell in one location and then something else in another location reacts as if it was stimulated at the exact same time. And for some reason, those cells or those particles are connected. They have been introduced in some fashion or for some reason they're, they're, they're connected. But the, one of the point of the experiment was that like everything is like kind of connected in, in this invisible space. Neither here nor there, pumpkin experiment. So water is very impressionable. So they found out that even just by writing labels on water, like joy, happiness, gratitude, those uh, samples of water were frozen and put under a microscope and they made these beautiful crystalline structures and they looked like snowflakes and it was all very beautiful and geometric. And then they would take the samples of the, from the same place of the same water and put it in another container and label it with like anger, hate, rage, like you should be ashamed of yourself, like made it like a, like mean labeling and negative labeling. And that water was chaotic under the microscope. It looked like just muck and bacteria and just like monster blah. Like it was just gross and ugly and chaotic and like no, no pattern, no form, no, uh, no rhyme or reason kind of thing. And so it got me thinking and then they, they exposed to different kind of kinds of music and it reacted differently to different kinds of music and, and water that had been blessed and prayed over no matter what religion it was, was, um, brought up to the, um, when, it, when it was measured, it was, it was at eight Hertz, which is the heartbeat is the same. And, and, and apparently the electromagnetic, uh, pulse of the earth is also at eight Hertz. So it's, it, there's like this consistency that like when you bless something, like there is an actual um, physical reaction um, that is responding to that blessing. So my thing was that, okay, so I think that you can put intention into things and I think that that is real and it's not hard or a stretch for me to believe it, but I think it is for other people. And so I was like, well, I wonder what would happen if, Cause like I'll make, um, you know, I mean like people that do, that do magical crafts, like they'll, you know, put intention into a candle and they're like, okay, it's good. It's done, you know, or they'll put intention into like writing, you know, their wishes into their journals or whatever. And they're like, okay, great. It's good. It's done. Um, bless a bath, take a, take a blessed bath. Like when a priest blesses, um, water to baptize, uh, you know, people in or, or to bless them. Like, I mean, who, Who's giving him that like extra zest? Like you can do it too. It's just about the intention. And so I did this the first time with an apple. I kept an apple alive on my windowsill for like eight months, I think. And then I tried to do it with this, not this pumpkin, but the last pumpkin lasted 11 months. And that pumpkin actually turned um, the week, like within the day or two that we found out that my brother had died. And so I think it reflected the grief of the house. Otherwise, it had been fairly uh, loving and joyous and positive environment. Which brings us to my current pumpkin. My per current pumpkin is, it's green, like almost to the point of like not even ripe off the vine green. This pumpkin started like straight up peach, like it was a peach pumpkin. It didn't have any green on it at all. And this pumpkin is still like firm and it is, it's still like as good as new. Like it's still firm, you could knock it. It sounds like it's still solid on the inside, juicy, still heavy, still firm, not mushy, no spots on it whatsoever. And so, um, the only difference is, is that it's starting to look younger. Like I think I'm having like a Benjamin Button situation on my hands and it's going to start sprouting the vine again because I've never seen the pumpkin actually go back to looking like not ripe green. And so when, we, when I bought this pumpkin, I had another pumpkin with it and the pumpkin, so this one was peach and there was a little green one that reminded me of Grogu from the Mandalorian and Tori and I were together and I was like, this is Grogu, it's our son, it's our love child. And so uh, to me, all I did was put the intention out there on the pumpkin 
that like, okay, you're the vibrational thermometer of the house. Uh, you can reflect back how much love and joy is in the space by your health and vitality and how, you know, how well we're doing. And this pumpkin in my intention was like, all right, this is me. This represents me. And then Grogu was representing the relationship because it was our love child. It was our love baby, a uh, little Grogu pumpkin. So this pumpkin is still here. Grogu didn't make it. And Grogu started busting at the seams, like literally started like cracking and busting at the seams um, around the time that I guess the tension was getting really high in our relationship. And when the breakup happened, that's when the pumpkin turned and went bad. The little love child pumpkin. It was so crazy. It was like, it was, it literally did what it did. And I don't think I ever like said out loud to that pumpkin, Grogu, like you're representing the, it was just thought. It was just silent intent. Um, I did tell them every once in a while, like how cute they were and how they were thriving. And I've joked around in this in the presence of this pumpkin how it's aging backwards, like in Benjamin Button, and it's gonna turn into like a seed of a vine. Uh, but yeah, I mean this this pumpkin has had a glow up and a sudden glow up. In fact, it's gotten younger and younger, like as quickly as like I lost a bunch of weight, like suddenly. Like we both had like our this miraculous glow up. Um, but yeah, so this pumpkin has just been in the house. It's been reflecting, I guess, of the vibes here, which has been mostly happy, fun, lighthearted, even considering the breakup. I mean, it was as good of a breakup as you can have. And um, yeah, it's it's thriving and I don't think it's gonna, it's not stopping at any point. And you might ask, Liz, when did you get this pumpkin? This pumpkin <clears throat> is from mid-September. And it is now, so, we're at the end of January, 2022. So tomorrow's just, today's January 28th, 2022. I bought this pumpkin at the farmer's market in mid-September of 2020. So this pumpkin is one year and like five months old almost. And this pumpkin is almost a year and a half old. Year and a half. Like it is not, like it is not going bad. It is not mushy. It's like the, it used to be peach like this. It's insane. So yeah, so um, one of the, the anecdotes that I thought was really profound from, I'll tell you two that were really profound from the Dr. Dr. Emoto water experiment, full documentary. Like I'm like promoting this thing. Like it's like coming out in theaters next week, folks. Um, go watch it, it's so lame, but it's so good. So there was a story, and both of these stories, I should probably vet them to see if they're actually accurate, but I guess it didn't matter because just believing that they were was enough to like set the tone for this pumpkin to be thriving. Uh, one and a half years off the vine, looking younger than ever, better than ever. Um, so the first story was about, it was, the setting was mid-century 1900s, like 50s or 60s. I think maybe during Cold War-ish time period. Um, Asian country, I think China, and there was a military group of people who were gathered together in a meeting room and they were talking about developing this um, uh, viral weapon, like a, like a bacterial weapon, like, like, you know, like an illness or something. And so they were just talking about their plan and like how it would be in detail in this meeting. And the only thing in that meeting was the people, their notes, and some carafes of water that they were all drinking out of. The water was there for the meeting. The water heard like all of the, the plans and the science behind creating this like uh, poisonous or chemical or bacterial warfare or whatever, this weapon. And that same night, every single person in that meeting had to go to the emergency room or the hospital because they were like retching and, and, and killing over like they were going to die. They were like deathly ill. So all of these people, like the hospital was like, okay, all of these people were at this meeting. Like they all, like they couldn't trace anything back to anything, but 
the water. And they tested, you know, ran all the tests and did all the work and stuff. And in the, in, the, in the end, they concluded that these people had been poisoned by ordinary drinking water. So the, the theory was, or the suggestion was, that the water must have taken on the properties of all of this, um, all of these negative things that were being spoken over it. And man, uh, manifested in poisoning these people. So it's really crazy how, you know, it's like instinctually we don't want to sit there and argue over our food for some reason. It's like, oh, or like if you've, I don't know. It's like you don't want to eat something that's been in the middle of like a bunch of chaos and like bad, like, or if you like went into some restaurant and had like bad vibes, you're like, I don't want to eat anything from here. And it's like, instinctually know that like the particles and the cells all that the everything is just light we're not like that solid so it's it's very impressionable so we're light and we're water and other than that like it's very little in between so we're very impressionable so when you know the bible tells us we have the power of life and death in our tongue and like you know what we say matters and our thoughts matter and, and it's true it, they do they do have an effect and so if you're, you know, always saying like, oh, I'm poor, I'm sick, you know, I'm fat, I'm so fat, oh, I'm so old, you know, like watch, watch yourself because I've watched people who have those patterns that say those things over and over and over again. And sure enough, they do end up sick a lot and they do end up, you know, fill in the blank of whatever they're saying. Um, but the people who say the opposite of those things thrive because they're, they're focused on health and wellness and vitality and well-being. And if you don't believe me, <laughs> believe the pumpkin. I mean, I guess I could be a fucking liar and I could have gone and found some pumpkin that was still left over, but probably not in season. And maybe this is only from this September, but like, I don't really have any reason to lie. I'm already out here saying unbelievable, like malarkey, so let you know believe me or not like the people that get it are here and they're like oh I, I don't need any convincing but yeah it's so crazy so there was another story that's also one of those things where i i need to look it up and see if it's true uh, but it really doesn't matter so if it matters to you you can look it up but i know that i have this pumpkin that's been sitting here for a year and a half so i don't really need to go do the research but <laughs> the tabloid tabloid story from 1800s so this this is was in the newspaper from the 1800s, so it, it probably, if it's legit, it's probably true. There were these people that were on a ship, and I, like, the na they named the ship, and they named, like, where it left from and where it was going to, so you could literally look it up, but I can't remember the details, but it was, like, a ship leaving, I think, from, like, Europe to America. It was, like, in the late 1800s, and the ship wrecked or sank and there was a, a boat of survivors who were adrift for like weeks in the ocean with no food or water and no rain. And so they got desperate and they started like getting tempted to drink the salt water. And they all just like, for whatever reason, they were so delusional and so feverish from their dehydration that they were just like, no, it's fresh water. And they were all in agreement that like, yes, this is fresh water. And they were like delusional level, like this is fresh water and they drank it. And when they, they were finally rescued, they felt like the people who rescued them were like, how long have you been out here? And they're like, they told them how long and they're like, there's no way you could survive. There's been any rain. Like, how did you survive? And they're like, we drank this water and it was fresh and it didn't kill them. And they're like, but it's ocean water. But somehow it, it miraculously didn't kill them. Doesn't wasn't salty. It was it's so you know your thoughts have power. Water's impressionable. Um, magic is real. Anything's really possible. Um, it just depends on if you're if you believe it really and truly. If you're like certain certainty belief. If you're aligned with it and you're. I don't know if you don't have resistance around it, like really anything is possible. And then also two miracles can happen. Like this is where I differentiate between magic and miracles. So miracles is like divine intervention. Um, I think that human beings can open themselves up to miracles, but they're grace that we receive from the divine. I don't think we can create miracles. 
um, we can be a channel for a miraculous moment or for helping, you know, create a space that allowed for a miracle for someone, but we ourselves cannot make miracles. What I believe magic is, is understanding that spirituality and science are not mutually exclusive. They're just two sides of one coin. And that, that piece of space between those two sides of the coin, that is magic. And magic becomes more visible when you start looking at quantum physics and particle physics, and you start learning about mysticism and you start comparing, oh, okay, these two are basically very, very similar. They're just different languages. So, and it's like the physics is still on the, on the side of the physical realm and the spiritual mystical side of it is still on this side. But when these two things meet, that's where like human beings, because we are as equally divine as we are human and we have free will, we are not pure enough to work an absolute miracle. We might be able to channel one through, but what we can do is learn how the energetic laws work in the universe and the spiritual laws. Um, and these are like universal spiritual laws. This is not like the rules of your specific religion. This, these are like the universal cosmo cosmology, cosmic laws. When you learn how those work, you learn that we are a vessel and a channel for one unified creative force. And that force can be used for good or for bad, just like electricity, just like money, just like anything that, that is its own energy or power. And so we can wield that this or that way. And it's kind of a predictable science when you know the elements that you're working with. It's just that the elements that you're working with are kind of, you're kind of at the mercy of your own self mastery because you have to be able to summon emotional states at the drop of a hat while also balancing like all of these other vices and virtues and like governing forces within yourself without self defeatism, without doubt, without being attached, without, so it's like all of these crazy, very nuanced elements have to come together to create magic. So that's why a lot of times, you know, it's sort of like at the beginning of Harry Potter when these kids don't have their, their magic honed in yet. It's like they're accidentally making all these things happen and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't and sometimes like they, they, they cast a spell and it kind of goes wrong. It's like, that's kind of how it is. Uh, so yeah, so this, all that to say that think about the world you want to create. Speak it into being. Um, cultivate it into being. I think that it's, it's important to note that um, even, a, even the magic fix is a process and it takes devotion and it takes maintenance. Um, that whole like, oh, magic pill and it's done. Like even magic isn't just a magic pill and it's done. It can be, but you have to maintain yourself for those magic pill, pill moments to happen. Uh, yeah, uh, maybe I'll come back on and update you again on how Pumpkin is doing and what Pumpkin's beauty secrets are and what Pumpkin is planning to do this coming spring and all the projects Pumpkin has uh, coming up and collaborations and, and whatnot. But uh, yeah, I think that I have said what I wanted to say about this. And if not, I'll just make yet another pumpkin video. You guys, be good, but not too good.